Hello everyone, Dragothian here. Welcome back to another Rise of Kingdoms video. Today we're going to be talking about Suleiman the First, the new legendary leadership commander that came out alongside of Honda Tadakatsu, which we just did a video on yesterday. Card up above me if you want to go check that video out. Spoiler alert, pluses and minuses, not that great, kind of okay. Got some unique things going on, but go check that video out later if you haven't done so already. But this video we're going to be talking about Suleiman. Is he going to be the guy that's going to be giving you positive trades on the field? Is he going to be the new meta legendary commander? Let's go into his skills and let's see if he's going to be your new Attila Takeda. Let's go. All right, welcome back. This is Suleiman the first huge fan of this guy. This is Suleiman the Magnificent. Suleiman the Lawgiver, direct descendant of Suleiman Shah. Suleiman Shah being the father of Ertugul Bey and Ertugul Ghazi, who then is the father of Osman, who founded the Ottoman Empire. Okay, so this guy's a big deal. I think he was like the sixth or seventh sultan after the Ottoman Empire was established, something like that. I can't remember off the top of my head, but this guy was a big deal. In history, he was one of those people that just changed things made things for the better let's go ahead and delve into his skills and see if that translates into rise of kingdoms because that's why you're watching this video so let's go ahead and go over his first skill well before we do the skills let's go ahead and go over his talents really quickly leadership conquering and attack i like those three trees together that actually makes a lot of sense if you're going to be using suleiman as a primary once we go through the skills you're going to start to see some things that might make you think secondary I might make you think something else. Let's go into the skills and let's go walk through this and how realistically on the battlefield this may work out or not work out. So first skill here, Magnificent Sultan, Rage Requirement 1000, that's a big point of emphasis here, deals direct damage to the target, so it's single target, up to 1300 damage factor. To me, it is very low, very low for a legendary commander. Um, now there are some bonuses here on the other skills that we're going to get to that should help with that. But the, as a base to me, that's really, really low. However, the reason it's low may be because of the second part of this skill. When the target that you're attacking has less than 50% rage, you, de you decrease their defense and their health by 30% each. That is huge. Okay. That is massive. That is XY's 30% debuff, okay? There's not very many 30% um, <laughs> health debuffs in the game, if any. Um, and not, not any that are together. There's no 30% defense and health debuff in the game, except for Suleiman. So this is huge. This is a huge debuff. This is basically a full set of legendary gear, if you think about it. 60% stats from defense and health. That's massive. Now, keep in mind... It's only for two seconds and again it's only if the target has less than 50 rage so very situational and very very short however however we're going to get to some scenarios at the end after we go over some of these skills where this may make a lot of sense or it may be a boom or bust situation so let's go to the second skill annexation passive skill troops led by this commander gain up to 15 percent attack and defense now Traditionally, when you're seeing legendary commanders in the game for a specific troop type, you'll see 20, 30, 40% defense, attack, health, whatever, right? This is 15% attack and defense. But you have to remember, you're traditionally going to be using at least two, if not three, troop types in a Suleiman army or in a Suleiman rally. So for that being the case, you're technically getting, technically, 15 and 15 times three because you're getting it for all the troop types so while it doesn't look that great on paper um realistically this actually ends up being pretty decent but again it's what you have to get if you're using a mixed troop type army so again this is kind of not as good on paper but it should be pretty good in the game but maybe not as good as it should be let me put it that way second part of this skill damage taken from all sources is reduced by up to 10 percent outside of alliance territory to me again that says something to me. He's got the conquering talent tree. He's got a outside the territory skill. Okay. That obviously is leaning towards rallying. 
let's keep that in mind as we're going along here. 10% damage reduction is huge. I mean, Sa uh, Sun Tzu has something like that where it's a 10% damage reduction. Um, that's really, really good. That, and there's no um, specific troop type for that either, obviously being a, a leadership commander. So something to keep in mind. The Siege of Vienna. Attacks have a 10% chance of reducing the normal attack damage of target troops by 20%. And their skill damage by 20% for three seconds when attacking cities or strongholds. It's all starting to stack up here, right? It's all starting to come together on saying, okay, this is a rallying commander. This is a rallying commander. Obviously, he's a leadership commander and a conquering commander, and he's even got the attack tree, which has a lot of rally-friendly talents inside of it. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and we're reducing, the <laughs> we're reducing their health and defense by 30%. We're reducing their normal attack and skill damage by 20%. I mean, we're really starting to nerf we're really starting to nerf our target when it comes to some of these skills here. Again, the second one, even giving you a attack and defense bonus and reducing the damage that they do to you by 10%. Okay. Janissary being the fourth skill, another passive one, obviously. Troops led by this commander deal up to 5% increased normal attack damage. Again, very, very rally friendly. If at least two different unit types are present, troops also gain up to 50%. Increase skill damage for three seconds upon suffering skill damage. Cool down of five seconds. So here's here's the thing. We need to figure out if a couple of things are happening here. Um, troops also gain up to 50% increased skill damage for three seconds upon suffering skill damage. That's not that big of a deal. Here we go. The Siege of Vienna. Before I, before I continue further, the Siege of Vienna. One thing I have to keep in mind here. Um, to get the 5% or to get the 20%. Normal attack damage reduction and skill damage taken reduction or skill damage reduction. Um, you, you, it's triggered by getting hit. So um, attacks have a 10% chance of reducing the normal attack damage of target troops by 20% and 20%. So attacks. Is it our attacks going out or is it being attacked? I want to say it's attacks. And if so, is that including counterattacks? Because if it includes counterattacks... This can be nerfed by people using one troop armies. If this is a rally per se, right? Somebody could send five one troop armies at you and trigger this skill, effectively nullifying an entire skill off of this commander for five seconds, which is a big deal. This is a big deal skill. This is a boom or bust skill for sure. When this procs, and if it procs at the right time, this could be devastating, absolutely devastating. But you could actually nullify it if you have an organized enemy who is hitting you with one troop armies nonstop that could trigger this if it's triggered by counterattack damage as well. It just says attacks, so we're going to have to test it out and see if this actually is triggered by just normal attacks or counterattacks. Let's go back to the four skill Janissary. Um, again, really, really strong skill. 50% increased skill damage for three seconds upon suffering skill damage. You're going to... It depends on how it's lined up, right? And it's going to be so difficult, so difficult to do this. You're really not going to be able to plan for Janissary proccing at any particular time, considering a couple of different things. One, if this is a siege rally, right? Or, or if this is a mixed troop rally, I should say, and um, you're rallying, say, uh, an Amanatori or um, a Amanatori Artemisia, right? There are proccable damages that happen outside of your normal skill cycle. Also, if you're fighting on the field with uh, Suleiman, you're talking about um, going up against possibly a, an Alex or a Bjorn or a Nebu or a Cyrus or any of those other commanders that have procable skill damages that are on top of what their normal active skill is. So this can get triggered quite often and you're really not going to be able to plan more often than not. Um, the ability to know when this is going to happen. So to try and line this up with your skill cycle, which would be the idea, right? If you're not lining this up with your skill cycle or if it doesn't go off during your skill cycle, the only thing that actually benefits you from this fourth skill is the 5% normal attack damage bonus, which is nice, which is nice. Okay, that's, don't get me wrong. That's nice. 5% normal attack damage bonus is basically a legendary accessory. Okay, so not bad at all. All right, not bad at all. That being said, 50% skill damage on top of it, way better, way better, okay? So you want both of these to proc off when you want them to proc off. Problem is, you're not really gonna have the chance to 
because of the way the game is and the way the game is played and um, again all the different commanders that are out there now with procable damages you're not going to necessarily be able to line this up you're really going to have to rely on the boomer bust mentality with Suleiman for this to really work okay so again we have a couple different things lining up here we have the 50 percent less than 50 percent rage 30 percent defense and health reduction we have another thing here with damage taken from all sources outside of alliance territory 10 percent we have another thing here where it says you have a procable chance 10 percent of uh uh, what does it say? Reducing the normal attack damage of target troops by 20% and their skill damage by 20% for three seconds, cooldown five seconds. And then again, fourth skill, very procable as well when it comes to not knowing exactly when this is going to happen. You can't plan for it. You get the 5% normal attack damage bonus all the time, but you don't get the 50% skill damage bonus all the time. That is a thing. Okay. Fourth skill may make this make a little more sense. All right. And on top of all that, let's, after we go over this expertise, talk about some strategy with this. So Master of Europe, when the commander has over 70% rage, another criteria, okay? Another criteria. Normal attacks by troops led by this commander inflict additional skill damage to the target 200 per turn, okay? But grant the target 50 extra rage. Now, on paper, I'm like... Okay, so how often, how many times am I going to be able to hit while I'm over 70% rage? Maybe three? I think three, maybe four. Like four would be the, the highest, I think. Uh, and you would have to have a silent trial hitting you or something for that to really happen. I think three is really going to be the norm for this expertise. So that means that I'm doing 600 damage factor over the course of three seconds, but I'm giving my target... 150 rage which is going to give him the ability to at least cast one turn sooner usually depending on if he's at the cap or not or two possibly even if he's got a 850 like say uh xy or um you know you have some rage generating uh target that is at 50 that puts him over the next 100 section and then that's a two second earlier uh turn cycle so um i don't know if this is on paper very good however when you look at all the other skills so all the other skills require some form of rage meter to be at a certain level so obviously with the expertise you're going to be over 70 percent rage generating your opponent 50 rage per turn and getting those extra damage factor points but look at the first skill it says when your target has less than 50 rage well this expertise will effectively guarantee this expertise will guarantee that this skill here will will do the debuff because you're always going to be after casting after your target there's no there's no chance that you're going to be able to cast earlier than your target unless again you're going up against somebody who has absolutely no rage generation and you've got a horn you've got trajan you've got joan you've got all these other things debuffing you right like you've got a bunch of different um buffs hooking you up with rage generation you've got the horn of fury you, you don't have feral nature so you don't have that proc available to you uh unless you use suleiman as a secondary to a skill damage commander or something like that so um or a skill talent uh commander so this skill here the expertise is meant to in my opinion guarantee at least for the first couple times that you will proc off this defense and health debuff for yourself that's the whole idea now again once that happens then you can start to probably see some of these other things start to proc off. So the fourth skill again, um, whenever you're talking about using two different troop types, the skill damage coming in can possibly proc at the right time. The third skill here, having your 10% uh, chance to reduce the normal attack damage and skill damage coming into you for three seconds, that could possibly help out quite a bit there. So it's all it's all starting to kind of come together to make to make this to where Suleiman really needs to be expertised, in my opinion, to make this all this work. And he's got a lot of stuff going on. Okay, he's got a lot of things going on. Very complex commander to go through that being said i mean when we're talking about honda right so i think the idea that a lot of people are having is obviously honda and suleiman is the rally combo and you're using this with mixed troops and honda is the primary because you want to have the 2500 damage factor okay um this could work um because again rage requirements at 1350 that means the 70 percent 
or really the 30% on the other side of that 70% is a bigger number. Okay, so 70%, um, I'm not doing the math right now, but basically what you're talking about is uh, 30% of one, uh, 1,350 for your rage requirement, that is going to basically be more because it's a higher number. So you may actually get four or five procs off with Suleiman being a secondary commander here um, because of the way the rage is structured with Honda. Now, conversely, again, <laughs> it may be too much. <laughs> it may be too much with Honda. Like it may take you too much time with Honda to get your skill going to where the other person that you're attacking is already over 50% um, generating rage, whether it be from Feral Nature or whether it be from other rage generating buffs from other commanders or whether it be from a Horn of Fury, talents, etc. Okay, so it may be overdoing it a little bit much. And again, these two commanders, they do kind of synergize together. There's some bonuses to attack and bonuses to extra attack when you're attacking troops, which I'm assuming hopefully will be as a rally situation as well. Uh, damage taken reduction bonuses for both commanders is huge. You're, this is this is going to help out mixed troops. This will help out mixed troops, especially if you use them both at the same time. But again, this is two legendary commanders, guys. Like this is this is a lot of sculptures. We're talking about thirteen hundred and eighty sculptures um, to max these guys out between MGE and Wheel of Fortune and Universals. This could get expensive to, to try and figure this out and see if this is actually going to be worthwhile. Now, luckily, I do have um, a, an account that I'm not really using that I've just been collecting legendary sculptures on. And I'm thinking what I'll do is I'll go ahead and max these two commanders out for you guys. Do some testings. Maybe we'll do a stream and we can have people um, on the stream say, hey, I want to test it against this. I want to test it against that um, and see what we can find out and see if this could be something that could be big. I... I personally think that they're on the right track. There's a lot of sk um, skill damage reductions. There's a lot of normal attack damage reductions. There's a lot of damage reduction period on these two commanders together. The problem is it's, some of it's very situational and it's not all the time. And when it's not active, I feel like these mixed troop commanders as good as they could be I think when all the little things that make them really good aren't active, they're going to get destroyed. Um, so any positive trades that they may come up with may get outweighed by the times when things aren't working right, like when they're not proccing right or when it's not in the right condition. Those times are going to really hurt the way I look at it, the way I see it. So um, again, I think in real world fighting scenario, this really is a boomer bust type of setup now i think these are really going to be for rally um and this could be again could be i, re I really hesitate i just i feel like i got like an attila takeda vibe with these guys Do, don't you kind of have that feeling throw it in the comment section below if you feel like you've got that feeling too i know when attila T takeda first came out it was different right because everything was skill damage like everything was skill damage or healing factor or shield factor right uh, well, damage factor for a shield. Um, then until it's Kata came out and it's, there's no skill damage whatsoever. It's like, well, these guys are crap. Um, I, I think my first video on them was like, okay, well, I, I can see a lot of movement speed. I can see a lot of normal and counter attack damage. I see a lot of just damage bonuses in general. I feel like these are supposed to be like shock troops. Like you're supposed to be able to move them around quickly, like fast infantry. Because back in the day, whenever until it's Kata came out, it was an infantry game. Like infantry was the thing. So when Attila Takeda came out, it was like, these are like beefy, speedy infantry that do a ton of damage. Like these guys are gonna do a ton of damage, but they're not super survivable and they can move really fast. So th that was kind of my thought process on those. But most people kind of didn't know what they were gonna turn into until it happened. And then it happened <laughs> and then they got hella nerfed. And then, you know, that's where we're at now. With these guys, I kind of have the same vibe. Like, nobody knows what to really think of these guys. I think that a lot of people are really reaching to try and say, okay, this is the premier mixed troop rally pair. You can do it. It's going to happen. It's going to be amazing. I feel like this is going to be something that really needs to be tested because I feel like these guys are boom or bust. Like, you're either going to have a really good rally because everything's lining up the way it's supposed to, or you're going to have like an okay rally because sometimes it did and sometimes it didn't. 
And then you could possibly have a rally that's just hot garbage because nothing lined up the way it was supposed to. Everything just like you got some normal attack bonuses here and there, but all the skill damage bonuses didn't happen when you were casting. So you didn't get those bonuses and that like it just I, I, mm, I'm just having this feeling like it's a boomer bust type of pair. So uh, I think Suleiman has more versatility than Honda, which is weird because usually it's reversed on the wheel versus MGE MGE being more focused on one task, whereas the wheel commander tends to be a little more universal, you know, read Alex, read Guan, etc. So, um, whereas with this one, it's kind of, to me, reversed. Like, I like Suleiman a lot better than I like uh, Honda, but again, I think they're meant to be used together, and I think they are meant to be used as a rally pair, and I think they're meant to be used in a very critical situation because of Honda's expertise and the way that works alongside of Suleiman's expertise. I just, uh, I need to see them in action. I think everybody will need to really see these guys in action before you can form a full opinion. That's why I wanted to make these videos not a mastery guide, but a, these are my thoughts uh, video because just based on my experience, this could go 10 different ways. Absolutely crazy. Uh, I like the complexity of these commanders though. It's not simply a, hey, this guy's got 50 stats on this, 20 stats on this, X damage on this, X damage on this, and we're done. This thing's got a whole lot of complex mechanisms inside of his skills. And this skill does some amazing things, but only during this time. And this skill does amazing things here, but also gives the bonuses to the, the target that you're hitting. And it's it's kind of crazy. So I like the way that Suleiman's done. I'm loving the fact that he's in the game finally. Um, I thought he should have been uh, towards the beginning of the game. But um, again, looking forward to seeing how this guy plays out on the field. I will be maxing these on one of my other T5 accounts that's not my mains. I'm conserving my mains for basically when I've you know, figured out together, right? We figured out together that this commander is really good. This commander is really good. This commander is really good. Let's make sure we have those on our mains. Um, and that's kind of the idea behind what we're doing. So um, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Make sure you throw a comment in the comment section below on what your thoughts thoughts are on Suleiman. And again, his pairing with Honda. Um, I hope that you guys are curious as, as curious as I am to see what this look, this looks like. We've got a lot of stuff coming up as well. We still have the 30 million kill project going. That hasn't stopped. Uh, we still have um, 916's KBK going. In fact, in about 10-ish hours or so, level seven pass is open, baby. We're fighting 256. That's gonna be happening tomorrow. And then on top of that, we had 307's KBK start as well. I've already got fog getting cleared on that alongside of getting the tech rolling on that so we are busy here and we have a lot of content coming your way i hope you've enjoyed the video see you guys next time cheers have a good one and take